No more taking keys with me. Automated locking and opening the door for people even when I'm not at home. <laughs> That would be so cool. Hey Axel, are there any Wi-Fi door locks on the internet? Yes, for example the Nuki smart lock with Wi-Fi gateway for 280 Euro. But I think that is too much for you, Scrooge. Uh, yes, Axel, you know me. But for that price, I can build it myself. At least that's what I thought. I just need a toy servo, an ESP32, a 3D printed case. Then I had a nice PCB made by my sponsor JLC PCB. I show you how that works later. Yeah, a little bit of software hacking and four to five hours done. And it was actually not that complicated. Not after four, but after 10 hours, I had a first prototype ready. Only one small thing was missing. I didn't want to have a cable permanently hanging on the door lock, but at least three months of battery operation without recharging. My thermostats also run on battery and are constantly accessible via Bluetooth. So it can't be so hard, right? Wrong. After a good 100 hours of work and three months passed and some prototypes, I knew it better. Buying would have been easier. Not necessarily cheaper, well, three dollars per hour for a newspaper delivery and I would be break even. But engineering is fun. At least that's what some say. I would say engineering is hard, especially if you don't know where to start or have no one to ask. The fastest way in this case is trial and error. And it worked out. I learned a lot. And I'm really proud of the results. Technically, it can do as much as, for example, the Nuki Smart Lock. The batteries last about six months and I can also use the hardware for other things. As a switch bot, for example, and that even with two servos. In combination with my self-made video doorbell, it's even better. If you don't have watched the video yet, you can find it on my channel, in English and in German. So, thanks for watching, like and subscribe. Oh. You're still here? You want to copy my homework, right? You should know I'm one of those nerdy kids with ideals. You won't learn anything from copying. Then you should buy a Nuki or Abos or Quiver door locks. Links are in the description. But that's also too expensive for you? Or you want to do something on your own? Well, well, let me give some more insights. With new projects, the first prototype is most likely trash instantly. That's why you shouldn't put too much effort into prototypes. So I build prototypes on a breadboard or just solder the components together dirty. Besides, I'm a computer scientist and not an electrical engineer. So please forgive my beginner mistakes. On my gravestone shall be written, here's always tried hard, anyway. With a second revision, you may give it a bit more effort. You maybe test such small serious prototypes with your friends and you don't want to make a fool of yourself. If I'm quite sure that everything works as I want, I take the schematic or my prototype and design the board with easy EDA. The program is free and easy to design boards with. Besides, it's perfectly tailored to JLC PCB and I always had very good experience with them. And JLC PCB was again so kind to sponsor my project. So thanks for that. I recently ordered a Raspberry Pi head for the i 23 smart home server so I can directly connect the smart meter and have a few LEDs and buttons directly on it. Also for the door lock I have tried the SMT assembly. The boards are delicious as you can see and at an unbeatable price. If you want to know how you create such board with easy EDA and, and how the ordering process works, please write in the comments, then I'll make a video about easy EDA and the ordering process at JLC PCB. Since my door lock is battery operated, saving energy is actually the most important topic of all. The Wemos D1 Mini needs too much power with existing Wi-Fi connection and in deep sleep it cannot be woken up via Wi-Fi interrupt, so I needed something better. A Lowlin ESP32 module has Bluetooth low energy and can be operated directly by battery. That should work, I thought. 
Well, I didn't manage to get it below 20 milliamps. Unfortunately, still too much. So I had to think about something else. During my college years in 2014, Elon Musk was not nearly as well known as he is today. But I read his biography and remembered an incredibly good blog article from waitboutwhy.com, which really captivated me in 2015 despite I had to learn four exams. It had a lasting impact. It explains a lot about Elon Musk's thinking with basic principles. One such basic principle is the cascade effect. For example, a domino doesn't need much power to topple over, but in a chain reaction it can trigger a much larger event. So I needed just a low energy trigger. My first idea was a kind of a touch button on the lock cylinder. Since the door lock is on the inside and the lock cylinder is usually led all the way to the outside, this would allow to wake up the door lock and trigger the chain reaction. After that, you could even type in a code using the lock. I thought this was pretty cool, but I didn't get it to work in practice. I guess the lock cylinder is too strongly grounded. As I said, I'm a computer scientist and still practicing electronics. You may can tell me. So I ordered a few Bluetooth low energy modules and had a look at the power consumption. With the JDY23 I found what I was looking for. Under 20 microamps and for about two dollars. Jackpot! And when connected a pin is set high and you can even communicate with UART. Since I still had enough Wemos D1 lying around I changed from the ESP32 back to the Wemos D1. There was only one small disadvantage. To test how much resistance the servo has at its revolutions, which I need to determine the end and start position, I needed a so-called shunt on the analog input and for the battery state I needed another one. Unfortunately the Vimos D1 Mini has only one analog input. Again a problem that took me a few hours trial and error. I finally solved it with two octocouplers. With a p-channel MOSFET I can switch off the electronics of the Vimos D1 and servo completely and the consumption remains below 200 microamps with active BLE connection. There was only one problem. The connection to Wi-Fi takes too long, 3 to 10 seconds. So I wanted to communicate directly via the Bluetooth UART. Unfortunately the standby consumption was again over 4 milliamps. I tried like crazy with resistors and diodes and actually a diode was the solution. <laughs> I didn't understand why. So luck is the best superpower and I rarely got some. The door lock can now be woken up from its 200 microamps standby by a Pi smartphone or ESP32 via Bluetooth low energy and UART commands within 200 microseconds. The battery lasts about 6 months. Perfect. Whether the transmission via BLE is encrypted and secure against man in the middle attacks, I don't know. If someone knows, please share your wisdom. I therefore change the access code that is sent via Bluetooth regularly. So is this necessary at all? Sometimes I think of this comic. Well, that's it for now. I guess it's kind of a place to start. And with enough demand there will be detailed instructions and some hardware sets maybe for the door lock and the video doorbell on an i 3 store. So for all those who need some guidance and also to finance the i 3 DIY smart home project. If you don't want to miss anything subscribe to the i 3 newsletter there you will get the installation script for the i 2 Raspberry Pi smart home server for free. Home Assistant, Node-RED with many add-ons, Nextcloud, MotionEye are already on board and pre-configured. You also can connect with other open source smart home fans via Discord or Reddit, ask questions and share ideas. This is Felix, stay smart and independent and see you soon.